what are some hygiene tips everyone should know? If you wear earrings, take them off and clean frequently. Yes, for the love of all that is good, clean your studs. I can clean myself, thank you very much. Brush your tongue as well as your teeth. Brushing my tongue makes me gag so I use a tongue scraper. Does a good job but it's kind of gross. My first couple times using a tongue scraper made me gag when I looked at it. I finally got over it but oh man, it's nasty. Especially if you're a coffee drinker. I have been a long time tongue scraper user. Forgot where I learned this but if you tuck the thumb of your other hand into a closed fist then squeeze it down it can prevent your gag reflex and let you scrape all the way to the back with ease. Hope that helps. Edit, read this too fast and thought they meant gag by using it too far back. A hack for the commenter I replied to's actual problem is what I also do brush and scrape in the shower. Just easier to rinse the scraped mouth stuffs between each scrape that way. I'm about to get out of bed and brush my teeth again gotta test this. For me it works somewhat, like a 20% reduction. It makes it easier to brush my tongue but does not magically remove my gag reflex. Also I'm 95% sure it's a placebo affect of some kind, but it does seem to help some so I'll take it lol. Belly buttons need to be cleaned. Edit, I know very gross things about hundreds of belly buttons now. For those asking, here's some info on how to clean your belly button. Edit too, please no more dirty belly button horror stories. They are nightmare fuel at this point. Absolutely. That's where I store my gummy bears. I store salt in there so I can dip my celery. Wash and change your bed sheets and your pillowcases. I'm a lazy poss and didn't do this for a while. I was surprised when I cleaned my face and it had looked so dirty, even if I didn't leave the house. Saw something online to wash your pillowcases before investing in an expensive skincare routine. Washed my pillowcases, saw immediate improvement. Wash pillowcase, drink water, where sunblock should all be done as part of all skincare routines cheap or expensive. Started getting into a habit of changing our bedding every Sunday, also why having two sets of sheets helps as you can get clean ones back on right away and wash them later. The vagina is self-cleaning. The vulva is not self-cleaning. Or put more generally, Outside parts don't clean themselves, inside parts generally should. Except teeth tongue. There's teeth in there? And a tongue. It licks you back. Ah, a worthy opponent. Our battle will be legendary. Less is more with perfume cologne. It does not substitute washing yourself. Don't remember where I had seen this, but the saying is fragrance is meant to be discovered, not announced. When I started wearing perfume my cousin told me, we're just enough that the boys have to lean in slightly to see if it is indeed you who smells so good. Your cousin has got game. Clean your ass. It doesn't make you gay. Also, clean behind your ears. Does cleaning behind my ears make me gay? Absolutely. I don't have the source in mind but it's been proven that cleaning behind your ears is linked to sexual orientation. Keep your nails clean. Tidying your nails helps you prevent spreading germs into your mouth. My extreme nail biting habit would like to have some words. You and me both. It'll squash the habit for a while, maybe a week maybe a month or two, then a stressful time rolls around and my nails and skin around my nails gets massacred. I've never been addicted to anything else, well carbs like most Americans nowadays may qualify, but I feel like fingernail biting has to be hard to quit because your nails are always with you. I have severe clinical depression and these are some things I've been told that were game changers for me. 1. Clean clothes and a hot shower will make you feel like a million bucks on your worst days. 2. If you have long hair that tends to knot a lot, brush your hair wet and start from the bottom and work your way up towards your scalp. 3. If you can't bring yourself to put your clothes away, start piles. You know what's clean, you know what's dirty, and what you can wear again. Edit, holy shit I was not expecting this comment to blow up. Thank you everyone for all the awards, helpful tips, support, taking the time to read, offer tips, and support one another. Reading all these comments has made my entire year and really moved me. You're all so kind and wonderful. We're all in this together, chin up, keep fighting, 
and know my DMs are always open if anyone needs an ear one day at a time. For your second point, you can buy a very wide toothed comb to hang up in the shower, and use it to detangle while your hair is coated in conditioner. It helps a lot. This. I have curly hair so that is the only way I can comb detangle my hair. Go to the dentist. Don't be embarrassed if you haven't been there in a while Therese nothing that they haven't seen before. I'm not embarrassed, I'm afraid and poor. I'm not even afraid. I'm just broke as shit. Yeah, I'm mostly afraid of the bill. Wash behind your ears. It's not an old wives tale that grandma scold kids with. There are lots of oil producing sebaceous glands there. You can get a nasty smell, and you can even get flaky skin or cheese build up behind there if you don't wash with soap. And if you wear glasses, be sure to also clean the arms of your glasses, especially the parts that sit behind your ears and picks up all that oil. I've seen some nasty glasses arms that could use a good clean. My dentist told the kids. If you only brush once, brush at night. She also said, if you let your kids trick or treat, allow them to eat all of the candy as soon as possible so as to get all sugar past their teeth as soon as possible. My dentist told us you brush in the morning to keep your friends and you brush at night to keep your teeth. Brush after lunch at the kitchen sink in the office to slightly weird out your co-workers. If someone offers you breath mints, take them without question. I'm always assuming they are being polite and sharing their stuff. Should have known better. They could just be polite. When I offer mints or chewing gum to others, it's usually just because I'm being polite, not because they stink. True. Feels bad to pop one myself and not offer. If you have bad breath that doesn't go away you may have tonsil stones. Are those the nasty white things that come from the back of your throat? Yes they are. They usually form in tonsillar crypts, those pockets in the back of your throat. I got myself water jet flosser or irrigator and it is great at removing them. Just wash it once every few days and bad breath just disappears if you keep rest of your mouth clean. Isn't the water flosser way too powerful? Tried that and it literally hurt. Yep you need the lowest power possible and it may still hurt a bit if you floss more delicate part. I recommend getting the one with weakest possible jet, it should be enough. The amount of these stones that fell out was astounding. Disgusting too but it was such a relief and the difference night and day. I get tonsil stones every now and then, maybe like twice a year or something, and I've never had a solution for them besides just waiting. NGL, I'd take some pain in the moment to get rid of them though. Besides breath reasons, they're annoying as hell. Like just always having something scratching at your throat with nothing really being there, sort of. A little pain in the moment to alleviate a passive irritation like that sounds totally worth it. Just a heads up one time I did this and spit up some blood it was a bad call. It's a good idea to bathe regularly and wear clean clothes even if you're at a magic, the gathering tournament. Too funny. My BF is huge into MTG and some people definitely need to be reminded of this. I wonder what it is about that specific crowd that makes them more likely to be unhygienic. Trust me, it's not just MTG rather than just any nerd hobby that has events. They tend to naturally attract the socially inept, who generally aren't seen in your local community beyond any obligation, such as work or school. It's also not just about being unhygienic, I've seen quite a handful of people say terrible things and act terribly in public, all because they were in a card shop or event hall and think it's okay. I once watched a 30-year-old obese, jobless, dirty guy literally threaten a 13-year-old who was beating him in a match at Friday Night Magic, a casual event. The best logical conclusion I can come up with is that the people who flock to these places effectively view them as safe spaces, where they can act the same way as they do online or with their few friends who also deem it acceptable, so they don't act with an ounce of courtesy. Wizards of the Coast, the creators of MTG, have put in a lot of effort to create real punishments for these kinds of people, but the culture will pretty much always be there, just like it's also there at anime expos, game tourneys, etc. Also, for the record, the stinkiest group of fans are Super Smash Bros. players, not MTG. Smash Bros. players are definitely their own level of smelly. In college I used to watch local tournaments and some of them were just mind-boggling smelly. There was one guy who would walk into the room for a quick game, leave, and the room would still smell like him over an hour after he left. It was like he came from a morgue. 
and it's not like we played in a cramped space, our college let them play in the very wide open lobby of the university center. The smell of that guy would not dissipate. Surely at that point the smell is just a part of his strategy. Like psychological warfare only smellier. An olfactory assault. 